right. You're going the right way? Mm-hmm. We'll give her hell. See what happens. And just so you guys know, Michael typically does fabrication. So that's like what he loves to do is he does a lot of beam trucks. He built our Jeep. What's up guys, Jesse here with Adventure Endeavor. Today, we're gonna to be doing some new ball joints on our Ram 2500. We're gonna show you that process and uh, hopefully make it easy for you. So if you wanna do a DIY job, it'll save you a lot of money and time. All right guys, so we went with some EMF Woo! ball joints and they come in two boxes like this. They have an upper and I believe a lower box. So there's your differences there. Comes with a grease fitting, comes with some spacers, and I believe this is uh, some sort of press kit, and it comes with some instructions as well. It's a very important thing. Uh, these are EMFs, they are made in Canada. I believe they have a lifetime warranty, and they are greasable. A lot of other a lot of people also like the carly suspension ones and then obviously too you can get like moog or just kind of a generic thing but if you off-road your truck a lot like we do i would highly recommend an emf or a carly we will do our best to link them in the description below our truck is a 2016 and it has 136,000 miles. I debated doing the ball joints when we installed this CERN fabrication truss here, but in the end, we decided to run them a little bit longer, which is great because I've had these ball joints sitting in our truck for almost three years. So we're getting a little extra mileage out of the factory ball joints. You can tell that they're bad. Um, basically, when the tire is on, you can, you can jack it up a couple inches, put a crowbar underneath the tire and flex it up and down. And you can see play in both of the lowers, especially. So we're just going to do everything. Step number one, Fab Lab already did. Take off the tires, jack it up, take off the tires. Pretty simple. If you have a lift, obviously that's going to be really nice. If you don't have a lift, just be careful. You'll be sitting on your butt a lot. What is step number two, Michael? Step number two is to start disassembling until we can get to the ball joints. So ABS take the calipers off, we'll pull the rotors off, get the wheel hubs and the axles and all that stuff out. We basically needs to be nothing here on this side except for the, the knuckle itself. And then once we get to that point, we'll take the knuckle off, start trying to work these ball joints out. So Michael just removed the tie rod end here and um, he loosened up the drag end as well. Now they're both free. Now this is the one that we're also replacing, the long drag link side. Yeah, so we noticed that this had a little bit of play in it uh, before, so we're gonna replace that as well. Because I was noticing a little, a little noise when I would turn the steering wheel. And so we kind of took a look under there and we're doing that. And then obviously the ball joints. And like I said, the truck has 136,000 miles. All the steering is factory. Ball joints are factory. And has a lot of off-road, like a lot of off-road, way more than most people. So the stock components are pretty solid in my opinion. Oh yeah. Honestly. I think for how much off-roading you've done on this thing, it's kind of amazing that you haven't really needed to do much more. These are the ball joints. Obviously, you can tell they have a lot of off-road miles. Like I said, I bought them a couple years ago and they've been living in the truck. But uh, this is what you're kind of looking at here. They come with little boots. They come with locking nuts. They come with Zerk fitting ends. And uh, there's just upper and lower. I got regular. You can buy them oversized if you think uh, they have a lot of wear and tear. But like I said, mine are just barely loosening up right now. So try to catch this stuff before they actually get too wallowed out because then it can create more issues. We're pulling off the calipers here because Mike is a legit mechanic. He has an actual hooks. That stuff saves you time and you don't want to pull brake and brake lines. <laughs> Our pads are totally fine. We did them not too long ago. They got plenty of life. And so the EMF directions do say do it one side at a time. 
And I think that's like, just so you don't confuse yourself. But this guy's a professional, so not worried about it at all. Right, Mr. Professional? That is correct. Plus, I'll be honest with you, after you've done a couple of these big trucks with the big solid axle front ends, there's not a whole lot of parts that are really hard to get screwed up because you're not. there's nothing really that you take off that one thing that couldn't potentially go on the other. And there's just not that many parts. You'll see when we're done, there'll be, I'll barely have half of my little service cart full of parts. So. Yeah, and the only thing that I've noticed so far is there's an upper and a lower ball joint. So like, and those will be very noticeable when you go to do them. The upper and lower ball joints will not fit in their uh, in the opposite holes. Of got it. Got be. it. They're different sizes. Now we're trying to remove the rotors, which we believe are factory. Yeah, those are factory rotors. Yeah. We've only done pads. I do try to use my exhaust brake almost all the time, so that definitely helps wear and tear on the pads, but we also have been towing consistently for five years, being full-time RVers. And, and some of those tows are pretty heavy. Oh yeah, yeah. We used to have a big fifth wheel that we towed, but uh, now we just have a smaller travel trailer. You put a lug nut on, so he can really hit it, and uh, it's not gonna fly off and hit the ground. That hit me. Man. Woo! That's why you don't need to go to the gym, huh? Some days. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> and just so you guys know, Michael typically does fabrication. That's like what he loves to do is he does a lot of beam trucks. He built our Jeep. Uh, this is actually his Explorer that he's doing an axle uh, swap, front and rear axle swap, Dana 60s on a Ford Explorer. This is another guy's truck, another Ram that's all decked out. So if you're in Simi Valley, or Ventura County area, and you want to have some work done on your truck, he, he can do everything, um, but he likes doing suspension, roll cages, stuff like that. So now we're removing the dust shield so we can get easier access. I feel like uh, you're going at a pretty good rate, bud, because I'm not really helping because I'm filming, and um, yeah, you're, you're killing it so These far. These guys can be a nightmare sometimes. Sometimes, but you said you got a special tool. I do have a new tool that should be really, really help speed this process up. And you'll try to get me a link for that so I can put it for people. But Most it's expensive. people will not buy that tool. It's too expensive. It's, it's very, very expensive. Can we try to show them like the getaway just to show them? Of course. Okay. Yeah, I have it right here. Okay, so we're going to show you not the getaway. It's just the inexpensive way. So you can buy this cheap kit from Harbor Freight. It's a Maddox brand. It's MA10-1 and it's a ball joint service kit. This is what I use for many, many years. It basically just has two bucks, a bunch of different size spacers, and then different random stuff. And you can basically kind of, doesn't come with any instructions. You can get pretty creative, but this will pull any most ball most joints ball out joints. of most yeah. half the full ton trucks. I will try to link one of these on Amazon because I know everybody loves Amazon yes. for the, the ease. There, um, there's like 50,000 companies that make it. So what do those kit. run roughly? Like a kit? I want to say when I bought this a few years ago, this thing was like maybe $150. So, but that tool and these ball joints, I believe are about $800. You're about $1,000 just in parts. That's not including labor, but if you're going to do it yourself, you could definitely save a lot of money. Hub nuts pulled. Obviously, it helps There's have four more tools. bolts behind here. Fords and Dodges are the same. They use a four bolt mounting system oh, and yeah. you get to them from back here. You get to the bolts in the back. It's kind of hard to see. Ka there. Kind of an odd design three, in my three, opinion, but it does work. Then fun little, fun little fact for most people is use the heaviest sockets that you have because they'll hit the hardest when you're using an impact wrench. Ah. So if you have an impact wrench that you're just, it's not working, it's not getting stuff off, but you're using like a chrome, normal, shallow socket. A little extra weight. Buy some heavier sockets, impact sockets, extra long impact sockets. You know, if you could find them for the right price and then that really helps make things come apart easier. Dodge gives you some spots where you can kind of put a chisel in there and kind of use a chisel to try to separate this stuff. But we're going to try it the easy way and we might have to resort to the hard ones. So. Yeah, typically a little bit of concussion will get them moving enough to pop out, but this side already broke free. Broke free, just yeah. It's not it. off, but I can I can see light here now. Where before uh, you yeah, couldn't yeah, see yeah. that, so it's it's gonna go. Whoop! Oh. 
keep in mind uh, to put anti seize on everything. When we anything put it back metal in. to metal, you might as well put anti seize unless it calls for Loctite. And then also, when you're putting all this stuff back together, the axle seals and everything, smear some grease on everything to make sure that it wants the axle wants to seal into the slide because you have to think at some point. If you plan on keeping this vehicle for another, spend another eight, nine years, you're probably gonna have to do this again. So set yourself up for success the next time around as well. So we discovered that one of the wheel bearings is bad. So we're gonna go ahead and replace those also, which sucks because they're like $500 each. We're gonna spin this one right now. Hopefully you can hear the sound. Basically there's nothing. A little bit of grind here and there, but this other one here, this other one here has a lot more sound. There's like a grinding sound when it's spinning. So that's the needle bearings uh, in there. And they uh, a little bit worn out. If you can't hear it, sounds like grinding. It's not good. The axles basically pull out real simple, real easy. You do turn them slightly just to fit out of the hole here. And now we are going to remove the nuts for the ball joints here. Hopefully get this whole knuckle to pop down. And then we got to press these ball joints out with his nice fancy press and hopefully it works well. Helps to have power tools. I'm gonna try with no extension at all. Sometimes the extension, they kill your torque a little bit. Oh, nice. So no extension. So why is this one so much better? Two reasons. One, it has built-in leverage ratio. So when I put down, we'll say 800 to 1,000 foot-pounds of torque here, gonna be more Even. than that. Maybe one and a half times or two. I don't know the exact motion ratio, but it's gonna give us added pressure to get these tough ball joints out. And on certain applications, it's really handy to be able to work out here because if you're trying to run the gun this way and this ball joint's in the way, mm. sometimes you need to work through the existing ball joint hole to press something like this out. And then the issue with that is, is while you're trying to run your screw down through here, it could potentially damage the inside of your ball joint press, you know, surface. Yeah. So this is just overall, it's just a, a better design. It's clearly more expensive because it's probably harder to produce and stuff, but we'll give her hell, see what happens. That seemed to work well. Yeah, that was, uh, I did this a few years ago with the normal one and that took about a hundredth of the time. So <laughs> that's pretty nice. So if you're doing these ball joints off that if you have a shop, you need this tool for sure. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Unless you really like to struggle. <laughs> we got ball joints out on the driver's side. They went pretty easy with that super nice press that he has. If you only have the cheaper one, like the Harbor Freight one, or the one I'm gonna link in the description, you may need to you know, tap around here. You might need to put some heat. Mike was saying that he had one one time, literally one ball joint took him three hours to get out. So far, we got three of them out here in probably, I don't know, 10 minutes. We're working on the last one, so. Ball joints are removed. I, I like to clean the housings. I don't know if it's necessary in my, you know, Expert expertise. <laughs> I just feel like if there's anything in there, it might kind of screw up your, your pressing What are you surface. putting on it now? Some no, anti-seize? Yeah, I like the copper-based stuff. It's, it's the opposite of seizing? It's the opposite of seizing. So next time you have to do these in nine years or 11, years or 15 years or however long years last hopefully they come out as easy as they did the first time yeah that wasn't terrible with a good tool it was not that bad this is the new emf ball joint sitting in place they do give you a cool uh, little cup a cool cup for getting them into position i like to start them so you're not just immediately going super crooked when you're trying to press them in yeah that makes sense so he's hammering it in Kind of just working it around it Get slowly. Get it started. You're kind of looking around. Do a visual. Just kind of like you'd put like a, you know, like a bearing in or something like that. I feel pretty confident with that and then we can press it in. And then obviously he's going to use his press to press it all the way in. Obviously they're greasable too. So they do have a, when we're all done, we'll put a Zerk fitting in there. And it's hard to tell, but they have four holes here and those are actually rebuildable. So they actually give you a tool so you can pull these out and rebuild them down the road. So you don't really need to replace these ball joints again. They're just completely rebuildable.
Very nice, sir. Very we're going nice. to do the other upper since we already kind of know the whole way that works. And then we're going to do the low. Do both uppers just because we already have it all set up, the tool the correct way. Hey, we smoke too soon. That's cool that they give you that tool, yes, huh? that makes it very nice. So then we put our boots on and put a little bit of grease in there so they don't fall down. Threw the nuts on just for now so we don't lose them or they don't go anywhere. And then we're gonna install the Zerk fittings. We got the ball joints in, we got the Zerk fittings. Don't forget your rubber boots. They give you a non-locking nut for the top and a non-locking nut for the bottom. That's just to press your knuckle on and then you're gonna use your lock nut nuts for permanent installation. Uh, overall, Michael made it seem very simple. If I were doing this in a driveway, it probably would have been fairly difficult. And it was really nice to have that high-end tool. If you have any questions, let me know. I will do my best to answer them. Also, Michael's like my best bud, so I can just, you know, ask him. We'll link everything in the description below. And then pretty much it's the reverse. Just watch the video in reverse, how to put it back together. That's it.